So as we talk about acid-base disturbances, we also want to talk about how these are compensated for by the normal functions of our body. So let's first look at a respiratory acidosis. So with a pure respiratory acidosis, the primary problem is an increase in partial pressure of CO2. Recall that when we see CO2, we want to think of excess hydrogen ions. This is also a relative deficiency of bicarbonate. Now recall that if our primary problem is a respiratory problem, that physiologically we cannot invoke the use of the lungs for this. So with a primary respiratory acidosis, our primary mode of compensation is going to be with, by the kidney. So with acidosis, the kidney and the proximal tubule is going to deal with this relative deficiency of bicarbonate. So we're going to increase the reabsorption or reclamation of bicarbonate in the proximal tubule, and we're also going to metabolize glutamine, and that's going to produce new bicarbonate. In the distal tubule, we have our type A intercalated cells, and these are going to help us uh, produce and retain bicarbonate across that basolateral membrane and secrete hydrogen ions. So the combined effects of the kidney are to deal with these problems. We have a relative deficiency of bicarb, so the kidney is going to help us retain bicar bicarb, and we have a relative excess of hydrogen ions or acid, and so the kidney is going to help us excrete that. With a respiratory alkalosis, the primary problem is a decrease in CO2 or hydrogen ions or a relative excess of bicarbonate. Again, only our kidneys are going to be able to help out here. So in the proximal tubule, because we have an excess of bicarb, we're going to see just simply a decreased reabsorption of bicarb. We're going to allow that to pass on through. In the distal tubule, our type B cells are going to be at work. They're going to help us produce and retain hydrogen ions and secrete bicarbonate. So these actions are going to directly oppose the primary problem that we see with a respiratory alkalosis. If our primary problem is a metabolic acid-base imbalance, then our lungs can assist us. So with a metabolic acidosis, the primary problem is a relative deficiency of bicarb or a relative excess of hydrogen ions or CO2. So what the lungs can do to help in this situation if we have an excess of CO2 is to increase minute ventilation. This allows us to blow off CO2, which helps to decrease hydrogen ions. Our kidneys can then come along later and help out as well. So again, with an acidosis, proximal tubular, when we're going to increase or maximize our bicarbonate reabsorption or reclamation, we're going to metabolize glutamine to produce new bicarb. Our distal tubule, we're going to have our type A intercalated cells working, which are going to help to produce and retain bicarbonate and to secrete hydrogen ions. So with a metabolic acidosis, our lungs are going to help us by blowing off excess acid or CO2 and our kidneys are also going to be able to help us. And then finally, our fourth example of the pure acid-base imbalances, be it respiratory or metabolic, is our metabolic alkalosis. So with a metabolic alkalosis, we have a relative excess of bicarb or a deficiency of hydrogen ions, or CO2. So with a metabolic alkalosis, we want to decrease minute ventilation, which will help us to retain or increase CO2. And then our kidneys are going to help out by decreasing the reabsorption or reclamation of bicarbonate in the proximal tubule. And in the distal tubule, our type B intercalated cells are going to work. They're going to help us produce and retain hydrogen ions, which is going to deal with our deficiency of hydrogen ions. And we're going to increase the secretion of bicarbonate. Metabolic alkalosis, lungs help out by retaining CO2. The kidneys help out by the way we deal with bicarbonate. Now, a handy way to graphically depict what's happening with these acid-base imbalances is by using the Davenport diagram, which I showed here. X-axis is pH, Y-axis is the bicarbonate, and then these green lines, these are isobars, these represent the concentration of CO2. So realize that we can draw these in for each level of CO2. Here we're simply showing them in steps of 20. But what we notice is, is that if we take our normal plasma and we vary the amounts of CO2 and we measure the pH, this gives us what we call a buffer line. 
So this is experimentally derived, and it shows us the changes in pH when we expose blood to varying concentrations of our partial pressures of CO2. And this line will help to set the slope by which we move as we depict some of the other changes that go on with compensation with acid-base imbalances. So let's do a couple of examples using the Davenport diagram. Let's imagine we have a respiratory acidosis with compensation. So the way we're going to start is we're going to start at our normal pH of 7.4, and a respiratory acidosis would be an increase in CO2. So let's just jump to the CO2 of 60. So this would give us a respiratory acidosis. The way we compensate that by that is by our kidneys. And our kidneys are going to compensate this by increasing our bicarbonate levels. So as we increase our bicarbonate levels, notice that we're bringing our pH back into a normal range. So this would represent renal compensation. And this is the diagram depicting a respiratory acidosis with compensation, getting us back into that normal range. If we have a metabolic alkalosis, with a metabolic alkalosis, the primary problem is not CO2, it is bicarbonate. Alkalosis would be an excess of bicarb, so let's draw that and say we're moving up, showing an excess of bicarbonate, which gives us a pH, which is alkaline. Now our lungs can help us out in this situation, and the way we're going to depict that is by moving to a higher CO2 level, and we're going to do that along the same slope as our buffer line. So we're going to show our CO2 increasing to this level here. So that brings us back closer to a, our range of normal. So this would be our respiratory compensation. But realize with a metabolic problem, we can also have our kidneys help out as well. So this is an excess of bicarb with alkalosis, so our kidneys are going to work by decreasing our concentration of bicarbonate. So notice as we do that, we again start to move closer to our normal range. So this would be a metabolic alkalosis with compensation, and here we're depicting both the respiratory and the renal compensation.